Well, good day and welcome to you. It is May the 23rd. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you happen to be. My name is Gary Willing, and as always, I want to welcome you to Search for Signs. And just point out, if you want to know more about this information, you want to get some background information about what we talk about, definitely check out some of the links that I provided in the description portion of these videos, because I think you can really get a lot of really good information that way. So hopefully you'll look into it. But of course, that is totally up to you. Now, I want to... Um, look at an article that Benjamin Krem's master wrote entitled The Coming Harmony. And I like this article because he talks about the divisions that we're seeing in the world. But I, you know, and we talk about the sort of cleavage or the divisions a lot on this channel. And if you are new to this information or new to hearing of this, this uh, video series that we, where we talk about uh, the divisions, I, the reason why I think it's so important is because if you watch the news, if you wa go online, if you even just step outside your house, you cannot help but see how divided the world is. Now, this article was written in 1988, and he was talking about the divisions. And I bet you if we could go back in time and talk to some people living in 1988, or even talk to our past selves, we would say, or you would hear people say, oh, there's no way the world can get any more divided than it is today without totally just ripping apart, right? Because the world was pretty divided even back then. Well, they'd be wrong, because I know I thought that, and uh, I'm wrong, because <laughs> the world is much more divided than it is today. I mean, I'm living in an America where I actually see on the news, on not on some alternative conspiracy website thing, I'm actually seeing this on the news, elected officials who are advocating another civil war in this country. There are also elected officials and people in the media who are saying that we might be headed toward that. And they're very serious. Both sides are very serious about it. So they weren't talking about another civil war back in 1988. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you can't get much more divided than a civil war, right? But if you're sensitive to world events, if you're sensitive to the world as a whole, you, um, when you see things like this, you can't help but wonder or ask yourself, you know, is it going to be like this from now on? Are we going to be just this divided 20, 30, 50 years from now if we make it that far? You know, are my children's children's children going to be dealing with this? Or, you know, or is it going to be something right in the next few years that's just going to create such a division that we won't be able to work through it and then we're end up, end up destroying ourselves? or ripping a country apart like the United States? Are we gonna be living in two different United States even five years from now? You know, that's the question, right? And of course it brings about uncertainty, it makes more fear, people talk about the end times and all that kind of stuff, but are we living in this and this is the way it's gonna be from now on? Well, I mean, the article is, the title of this article is The Coming Harmony, so the masters would disagree with that fear. They would say no, but why are we going through this? Okay, so let me just, and this is the reason why I think it's important to talk about this, is Maitreya himself says that we are about to have to make a choice as a humanity. And there's really only two options that we can choose from. There's not a third option. The first option is to continue on in the same way that we've been doing that's totally familiar that we all know about. Everybody looking out for themselves, every country looking out for themselves, hoarding resources, doesn't matter whether half the world's in abject poverty or starving to death. As long as I got my money, I'm good, right? As long as my country's fine, we're okay. You know, America first. I mean, I can go on and on and on and list, you know, but you're, you're aware enough of what's going on in the world, you know. But if we continue on in the same way, what will end up happening is we will destroy life on this planet, according to Maitreya. We will either destroy it militarily because we have the capability to. You know, nuclear weapons, we have enough to blow the world up and destroy life a hundred times over on this planet. That's a fact. <laughs> it's not hyperbole. I'm not exaggerating. I mean, we can do it. Or we will not cooperate it well enough 
to work out solving the environmental problem. And we will de- and we will destroy life on this planet because the environment will break down to such a degree that we won't be able to come back from that. It's one or the other. That's that's one choice. The other choice is we take Maitreya's advice and accept the principle of sharing. That will end hunger almost overnight. It will ease the tensions amongst these nations, bring about justice, bring about trust, and eventually create goodwill amongst these nations. And then long term, we will see a peace like we've never seen on this planet. That's and give us a future. So then we wouldn't have to worry about a divided world for our great, 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 great grandkids. We'd be living in a much more unified and harmonious world. But according to Maitreya, the first thing we have to do is create the principle of sharing on this planet. There's no other option. So that's why we're living in this divided world, because humanity must create this, make this choice. Now, the reason why we're so divided too, is because the Christ principle within our own hearts, but also emanating from Maitreya at tremendous potency, stimulates who and what we really are. And what we are right now is very divided in our thinking about the best way to go forward for humanity, whether to go back to the way it was or to go forward and try something new that works for everyone. That's and that's like that in education, it's like that in healthcare, it's like that in economically, ecologically, I mean, everything is like that. If you really look at it, it's, they either want it to stay the same or go back or move forward and try something new, right? I mean, that's basically the an essence of it, so the essence of it. But we must go through this stage in order to truly make this choice. And if we do make the choice as a humanity, we'll never find ourselves back at the brink like we are today. That's why I always say that I think that this generation that's alive on this planet today will be looked by, looked from, you know, in the future, from future generations as the generation of choice. And I'm not talking about the boomer generation or the Gen Xers or the millennials or the Gen Zs or Gen Ys. I'm talking about everyone alive today will have to make that choice. We'll have to do something. We will either make it or we won't. Now, Maitreya says he already knows. He, how did he put it? He goes, the end is known from the beginning. And he already knows the choice that humanity is going to make. And, it, and his heart is glad. So he knows where we'll make the right choice. It's just we're going through this time. And we have to go through this time in order to make that choice. So as perilous as it seems, as uncertain as the future might seem, as hopeless as it might seem, these are just fears. And eventually, we will see that we do have it in our hands to make that decision. It's not, we're not powerless. We don't have to rely on our world leaders who know nothing about nothing. I think they do, but they don't, right? So that's why I love this article, and, and it really kind of, I think, brings me a lot of hope to read it, especially because I'm sensitive, and I, it, I'm not going to lie. I mean, it, I look at the world sometimes, even knowing this information, go, is this... Are we ever going to get through this? You know what I'm saying? It just seems like it's been going on for a long time. Like I said, it seems like it's getting worse and worse and worse. Now, I do want to point out a couple things uh, before I read this article. Um, The first thing is, where is it? In the very first sentence, uh, his master wrote, and again, this was in 1988. He says, all known landmarks will be, he goes, how do you put it? He goes, as we come closer to the day of declaration, we find a growing Presentiment that soon all will be changed. All known landmarks obliterated or pulled down. And if you live in the United States and you've been watching the news, you see the right is accusing the left of this woke culture, cancel culture, all that kind of stuff. But there are a lot of people and a lot of groups of people that want to see a lot of these 100 or 200 year old statues that remind them of a time of oppression taken down. And the right conservative reactionary side is, no, 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 that's our history. Well, according to Benjamin Krem's master, this is all a part of the plan that we're seeing. So quite interesting stuff. Now, the other thing he said, and then I'll read the article is, um, already many fear the gathering storm of the century's end, because this was written before the turn of the century, but you can still kind of apply it to today, and search for safety in mountain and desert retreat. They fear the destruction of the familiar pattern of their lives and await the cataclysms conjured by their fears. This is a direct 
reference to people who see the, think that they are living in the end times. And they're also a direct reference to those people who think that just because they move themselves from society, that that will, that will keep them protected, which it won't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because we're, we're living in a very, very tiny world. And one nuclear weapon that goes off, I actually put a video up of an expert on nuclear war, and he talks about just one nuclear weapon going off will lead a chain reaction that will end all life on this planet. It will not matter where you live, you will be toast. <laughs> so peace is the most important thing that we can do. And again, I want to say this before I read this article. I always talk about the principle of sharing. The, and I offer up evidence of what the teacher is saying. And is there any truth to it? Is what, what Maitreya says is it hold water, for instance. Because people always want proof from me. They want a proof from Benjamin Krem when he was alive the same way. And even though I've met Maitreya many times, I can't offer you the proof. You can only take me at my word or not. I don't really care. I know they happened, and I know who was telling me the things, and I know who I met. But what really matters and what should matter to you is looking at what he's saying. Is there any truth to this? Without sharing, there could be no justice. Without justice, there could be no peace. Without peace, there could be no future. That's all you need to know about what Maitreya's teachings are, really. The other part... It's important, but it's not as important as this. But is what he's saying true? And you can still be a Christian and investigate this for yourself. You do not have to change your religious view to do this. But if you go to the, if you go to Wikipedia even, and you read about the Marshall Plan, it happened right after World War II. The United States gave excesses of their resources to Western Europe, and then Western Europe eventually gave the excesses that they started to create back as payment for what they took. That was the Marshall Plan. It happened for four years, over 70 years ago. Every single nation that's listed in Wikipedia, okay, I can't list them all because there were some smaller nations in there, but the biggies would be France, England, Portugal, Spain, Germany, United States, okay? And then, like I said, there were some other ones in there too. Italy, uh, the other one. Every single one of those nations at some point had been at war with another nation of those six. Now, the other smaller nations, I can't really say that because I don't know much about their history, but let's just assume that they didn't. But those six did, okay? And those were the biggest nations that participated in the Marshall Plan. England, of course, had attacked the United States during the Revolutionary War, during the War of 1812. England and France had been at war with one another for centuries. Same thing with Germany and France, Germany and England. But even... If you just look at World War II, which had just happened prior to the Marshall Plan, those nations were at war with, with each other. But since then, every single one of them, not one of them has attacked one, on, one another. So like I like to say, Jesus says, you know, there's a lot of religious people that, that I guess, listen to some of the videos. Hopefully they listen this far. But a, uh, what you sow shall, shall you reap. You know, you plant a seed, you get, what this, you get the, the fruit or the vegetable or whatever, the plant that you planted. If you're planting a, a, a kernel of corn, you're not going to get wheat. You're going to get corn, right? I mean, that's in essence what he was saying. So the fruit of the tree of that seed of sharing is peace, goodwill amongst those nations. So I always like to say, if just doing the principle of sharing, which was what Maitreya is advocating for four years, 70 years ago, and stopped... And those nations still have a peaceful, trusting relationship. What would the world look like if every single nation participated in the Marshall Plan, and it was global, and it never ended? What would the world look like for our children's children's children at that point? Would we be just as divided, or would we be living in a much more peaceful world than we're living in today? Well, that's what I'm offering up as proof. But let's listen, to, and let's, let me read what his master wrote, about Benjamin Crumb's master wrote about the coming harmony. So... If you don't listen to the whole article, just the title of it would show, would, should tell you that he's saying that we're not going to be living in a divided world much longer. So, As we come closer to the Day of Declaration, we find a growing presentiment that soon all will be changed. All known landmarks obliterated or pulled down. Already, the signs are there for the knowing eye to see that the end of the epic is at hand. Already, many fear the gathering storm of the century's end and search for safety in mountain and desert retreat. They fear the destruction of the familiar pattern of their lives and await the cataclysms conjured by their fears. 
That the world is experiencing rapid change is true. Each day brings its quota of events. None can deny the hectic rhythm of transformation now sweeping over the world, nor the new climate of hope which this engenders. The work of the watching hierarchy, therefore, is no easy one. Theirs is the task to guide events in such a way that minimum cleavage results. Giving full rein, the forces of reconstruction and change would sweep away all opposition to their plans, and sow the seeds of future discord and strife. Held too strongly back, the forces of reaction would deepen and prolong their weakening hold over the destinies of men. In this transitional phase between the ages, steady but ordered change is the prime requirement, and the masters bend every effort to achieve this goal. To affect this balance, forward movement, the energy of the spirit of equilibrium, overshadowing the Christ, has been released and now saturates the world. More and more, it will bring all factions to the moderate central point, and consensus will replace opposition as the order of the day. In equal measure, to the present tension and conflict, this divine force will restore harmony and peace. Thus will it be. Thus does the great Lord work to make this world safe for men. When all is ready and prepared, when world events have signaled their warning to men, Maitreya will step forward and claim his rightful place as teacher. From that point onwards, a new spirit of cooperation will make its appearance and lead to the rapid transformation of all our structures. Men will accept the guiding wisdom which his spiritual stats, status confers, and stage by stage, in mounting momentum, will remake their lives in relation to the spiritual blueprint with which he will endow the world. His present work is to restore and maintain balance, thus saving humanity much needless pain and suffering. Already, the evidence is there that this is being achieved, and a new spirit of conciliation engages the minds of those who lead the peoples. Soon the world will see the teacher in their midst. Many have experienced him in one way or another and await his public appearance with joy. There is not long to further await the avatar, the Christ, the teacher for Remember all Remember to take action men. and help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to talking to you again in future videos.